Well, hey guys, I thought it would be really fun to share with you 10 of my most frequently repurchased skincare products, products that I have been using for a long time, maybe discovered through this channel, but continue to repurchase. Before getting into this video, definitely give it a thumbs up if you like skincare content from a board certified dermatologist. Make sure you're subscribed and you have your bell notifications on so you know when my videos go live. One product I would never have discovered were it not for you guys, and I came across it, tried it out, probably around five years ago, and it is one of my most frequently repurchased products, and that is the Hotalabo Cleansing Oil. I discovered double cleansing through this channel. It was not something I had ever really thought about. It's a way to remove cosmetics, dirt, and impurities a little bit more efficiently. It's also really helpful for removing water-resistant sunscreen without needing to rub and scrub as hard. Anyways, this was the first one I ever tried and it is my gold standard cleansing oil. I compare all cleansing oils to this and I love it. As a matter of fact, whenever I use this product, I don't know if it's just in my head, but I swear my eyelashes, they appear a little healthier. They just seem to be a little longer, I don't know, less lash breakage overall. It has olive oil and a hoba seed oil as the oils, and then it has emulsifiers. So you spread this on the surface of the skin to break up that film, then add a few drops of water, it emulsifies, and then in the shower, I wash it off with a mild cleanser. Always love this. And one thing I really wish that the US would follow suit on is that with this product, when you go to repurchase, you can actually buy a refill in a bag that you can pour into this bottle so you don't have to repurchase the bottle again. So that cuts down on unnecessary waste. That's the, that's the case with a lot of Hotalabo skincare products. I have purchased this product from three vendors over the years. Yes Style, Stylevana, and Amazon. And if you like it as much as I do, then you can get the refills and you don't have to repurchase the plastic bottles all the time. Other cleansing oils that I've tried out and also repurchased, the Cozy Softimo Speedy Cleansing Oil is also great. And yeah, Japanese cleansing oils, they're where it's at. If you happen to have an H Mart in your area, skip on in there, because they often carry Hotalabo and some of these brands. That way you don't have to buy it online if you don't want to. Let me know in the comments, if you use Hotalabo, what is your favorite product? The second product that I have purchased numerous jars of, discovered, Again, through this channel from CauseRx, it's their Advanced Snail 92 All-in-One Cream. Now this has snail filtrate in it. I get a lot of comments whenever I share this product or other products that have snail filtrate. Isn't that harmful to the snails? It is not. The snails are not harmed in the creation of these products because when snails are stressed out, are in stressful conditions, they emit toxic substances. So it's in no one's best interest to stress out or harm a snail. They just naturally secrete this and it's collected, so it's not harmful to the snail. I don't think I ever would have really thought about trying out a snail product were it not for this channel. But there is some evidence that snail filtrate is helpful for healing, recovery, and it's been shown to help minimize radiation dermatitis. This particular product from CauseRx, I happen to think is one of the best ones out there. I've even tried Biopel. Biopel is like a medical grade skincare brand. I say that in air quotes because you guys know medical grade is just a marketing term, but they have a snail uh, serum. I've tried that. It has a horrible fragrance in it. And I personally think this product is superior. I've tried both. This product is superior. They, um, CauseRx also makes a snail mucin serum that's also fantastic. But this particular product is very thick. Um, you don't need very much of it. The only thing about it is it's pretty stringy when you go to take the product out of the jar. So it can be a little messy, but I swear, um, when I use that, I put it on at nighttime as a nighttime facial moisturizer. The following morning, I've got like significantly healthier looking skin. I don't know if it's all in my head, but I will tell you this. Recently, I tried out some products from Isden, which I shared with you guys in review videos. And you'll recall from those videos that some of these products were irritating. And so when I paused them to give myself a break, I came in with a snail and things went back to normal. It was very calming and helped. 
In the realm of dark spot correctors, I've tried out many, many on here, different serums for brightening, a lot of great ones, but one I have had great success with personally, have repurchased multiple times, used it multiple times, gotten good results multiple times, and it is the PCA Skin Pigment Gel. It is a dark spot corrector that you can use either just to dark spots or to a widespread area. It has kojic acid, azelaic acid, lactic acid, and it also has glutathione, an antioxidant. This combination of ingredients is wonderful for tackling discoloration and dark spots. In this particular formulation, I happen to think is very nice in terms of its consistency, the vehicle for people who have acne prone skin because it's a gel and it's very thin, very lightweight, it's non-greasy. It has low molecular weight alcohol in it, which makes it very quick dry, fast absorbing and non-greasy. And as a matter of fact, I have used it um, in the past at least. Uh, if you've been here for a while, you'll remember a, a couple of years ago, I took a topple on the Houston sidewalks, which are notorious for being lumpy, bumpy and uneven. And I got a pretty nasty gash on my arm. And that product actually helped in fading some of the post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation from the healing of that. I still have a little bit that's probably never going to go away, but that of course, combined with sun protection, it definitely helped a lot. And I got good results on my cheeks beyond what I got with just retinoid alone. I had been using retinoid prior to using that product on my face and was getting good results with retinoid. First I was using Adapalene and then I switched over to Tretinoin. But when I threw that in, it really kicked things up a notch for me. And I got some clearance that even after stopping has been sustained of hyperpigmentation that had been lingering around for a while. The next one is for those of you who deal with redness, whether it be acne redness, rosacea redness, you need a moisturizer that's maybe lightweight, non-greasy. Procure Rosacare. I love this, definitely underrated. You can get it at CVS, sometimes it's on Amazon. The problem is that it sells out very quickly and sometimes it takes them a while to get the product back in stock. Um, I've purchased this on Amazon or at CVS. This product is a very lightweight moisturizer. Uh, you can layer it underneath the heavier moisturizer if you want. It has licorice root and niacinamide. Both of those are great for redness, irritation. They're also good ingredients for hyperpigmentation. And this has a green tint to it from the chromium oxides. And that green tint just kind of helps mask the appearance of the redness a bit. So if you're someone who wakes up in the morning and you tend to have a lot of facial redness, you may want to put this on as a morning serum uh, allow it to absorb and dry fully, and then of course put sunscreen on over it. It works great. Underrated product. I've mentioned this in numerous videos over the years. Products for redness, rosacea, sensitive skin, post acne redness. Also good, again, for hyperpigmentation. Underrated, Procure Rosacare. I definitely repurchased this so many times. It's the CeraVe Healing Ointment. You guys know I love this product for, as a lip balm. Uh, I use it for slugging when I'm feeling that. I took it actually on that long flight to Paris and I put it on my cheeks, really helped out a lot and my face not getting dry and irritated from the long flight. Uh, it's great if you run, I use it to reduce chafing. I use it on my heels to reduce blisters. I have tried many petrolatum ointments that are popular. All of them are great, Vanny Ply, Aquaphor, plain Vaseline, but this is my favorite. I love it. I find that, especially on the lips, it gives like a plumping effect. Uh, and I like it, I, you know, it's got hyaluronic acid in it, which is humectant, helps pull water into the top layers of the skin, kind of smooth things out, plump everything up. And I think that makes a huge difference. It's, you know, it's all in my head probably, just in my anecdotal personal experience using it. This one, is, it's, it's my holy grail. You know, it's one I love and well, I, I hope they never discontinue it. So they make it in this tube. They also make it in a jar. A word of warning though, when you buy the tube version, when you first get it, it's very difficult to squeeze out. Over time, the product gets softer and easier to squeeze out. But yeah, if you have 
hand mobility issues, be aware that the tube might not be the best choice for you if you, if you have difficulty squeezing down, because it is kind of hard to get it out in the beginning. After a while, it's fine. This is great for cuts, scrapes. Uh, if you have a lot of irritation around the mouth, it's helpful for kind of calming that down if it's related to saliva collecting there. Uh, if you get irritation in the skin folds, this is a great skin protectant. Also great for diaper rash if you have young children. Uh, love it. Everybody has their preference though when it comes to these types of ointments. Some people don't care for the CeraVe healing ointment. They're our team Aquaphor. Let me know in the comments what side of the what side of the ointment coin you're on. I guess there are multiple heads to it. It's not a coin, anyways. I did review actually. I did a uh, I did a head-to-head -head comparison between Aquaphor and CeraVe healing ointment, so check that video out. Now the next product is, a, is, is close because it was close between uh, either this one or CeraVe moisturizing cream. I probably repurchased them with the same frequency over the years, but since I had the ointment, I decided why not give an OG of mine, a Vanny Cream, some air time. Love this product. It is just a basic, no-nonsense moisturizer. It has petrolatum, mineral oil, and uh, no niacinamide, no hyaluronic acid. So some people find those ingredients to be irritating. They're sensitive to them. This is intended to be used on the body as a body moisturizer. I started using this back when I lived in Colorado where it's super dry. And this was a holy grail for me there. I use this a ton. In contrast to CeraVe moisturizing cream, which I also frequently repurchase and use as a body moisturizer and love, this one is a lot greasier. Um, so that is great if you have very dry skin. If you have eczema, it's great. You can also use this on the face, I do but you may find that you don't care for it there. This feels too heavy. If you have rosacea, you may find that the heavy occlusiveness of this is just a bit too much for you to tolerate and it aggravates redness. But yeah, I love this and repurchase it numerous times. Vanny Cream products are pretty no nonsense and they are free of common allergens. So they're a great choice for people with eczema who are prone to developing allergies to certain ingredients like fragrances and certain preservatives. So it's a really good line of products if you have eczema and that cream is great for inflamed eczema, active eczema, or just kind of maintenance for sure. In the realm of sunscreen, probably my most frequently repurchased sunscreen is the La Roche-Posay Anthelos uh, Melton Sunscreen Milk. I love this for the face, the body, it's water resistant, fast absorbing, non-greasy, no cast, and it's great if you live somewhere like I do that's super humid. If you're active in sport outdoors, you can rely on this. It doesn't run into the eyes. It does look shiny on the face, but I don't care about that. Uh, and they make it SPF 60 and SPF 100. Sometimes the 100 can actually be hard to find. I've used both. Highly recommend these. They're great for you know outdoors. If you're gonna be outside, like at the beach or something, these are great choices as well. Rub into the skin well, but they don't leave a sticky, greasy residue. Uh, free of fragrance. Speaking of sunscreen, this is a product, it's a facial moisturizer with sunscreen that I have repurchased so many times. It's by Dermatology. And this is their broad spectrum SPF 45. It's basically a nice moisturizer with a hybrid sunscreen in it, zinc and uh, octinoxate. Not water resistant, this is just a good everyday facial moisturizer. It does have niacinamide in it, which again, helps with redness, hyperpigmentation, oiliness, has a you know anti-aging effect, good for the skin barrier. Also has been shown to help minimize skin yellowing related to sun damage. So a good ingredient, although I know a lot of you guys don't tolerate that, so this would not be for you, but definitely one I have repurchased numerous times. This and they make this in a tinted version. I love the tinted version. It's a really nice tint. Uh, the tinted one happens to be SPF 46, but otherwise they're pretty much identical aside from the tint. A uh, word of warning, these both, both this one and the tinted one, they have this kind of odd pool float type odor, but that fades very quickly. It doesn't linger or anything. I kind of like it, but it freaks some people out. That is one I go back to time and time again. Uh, it's not, uh, it's, it's a hybrid sunscreen. So there is gonna be a cast to it if you have a, a deep skin tone. It's going to leave, you know, that kind of, 
ashen lavender type look to the skin. It's not cast free, but for me, it's basically cast free. Um, although I later on discovered Epion's. Epion's Universal Shield, I think it's called. I've repurchased that a few times, not nearly as many times as Dermatology because I discovered Epion's later on. The Epion's one um, per ounce is actually a little bit less expensive and a very similar non-tinted product. So very similar to, to this SPF 45 one. Neutrogena Hydro Boost Extra Dry, the gel cream, love this. Initially when I tried it, I was five, six, going on close to six years ago, I discovered this. I, I wasn't so fond of it like the first few times I used it, but I later fell in love with it after making it through the jar. And I, it's one of my most repurchased products as a whole. Honestly, I go back to it time and time again. It's got sodium hyaluronate. It's very lightweight, non-greasy. I say to get the extra dry one because it is fragrance free. They make Another one that looks almost identical, but has fragrance and the fragrance is very strong and many people get that one and then they leave a comment. Why did you recommend this product with such a strong fragrance? You've got to, you got to make sure you get the extra dry one. It doesn't have fragrance in it. Um, <clears throat> anyways, love this, love the consistency, non-greasy. It has dimethicone in it and you know, it's marketed for people with extra dry skin, but if you have oily skin, it's pretty lightweight. I think you would like it. It's a very unique formula. Also has glycerin in it, another humectant like sodium hyaluronate. Both of those are gonna pull water up into the epidermis. That helps improve the health of the moisture barrier, makes the skin look plumper, smooths fine lines out, and really helps improve the natural turnover of the skin barrier more efficiently so you get less buildup of dry skin smoothing everything out. Love this. Um, it's tied though, as far as do I love it as much as the Aveeno Calm and Restore Oat Gel Moisturizer. I love that product, but it is newer in comparison to this. So by default, I've definitely repurchased this a lot more than the Aveeno Calm and Restore. But both of those are some of my favorite facial moisturizers. Uh, Aveeno Calm and Restore is, has Centella in it and oat, uh, it's great. I hope Avino never discontinues that, and I hope Neutrogena never discontinues this. I also really like their hyaluronic acid serum that they make. If you like incorporating hyaluronic acid serums into your routine, I have repurchased that a fair number of times. Um, it's a newer product relative to the gel cream, so not as many times, but they, they actually layer together well for an extra pack of hydration, if you will. Okay, and then last but not least, this precedes my days on YouTube for sure, but definitely one that I repurchase time and time again for the callus on my feet, and that is Carousel Foot Ointment. This product, I'm telling you, if you've been going to the nail salon and having them file down your callus, try this out because it pretty much will eliminate the need to do that for beauty purposes. Uh, when they file down the callus with that blade, uh, it's just gonna come right back again, uh, kind of a, as a response to that little scraping and injury. But this will actually soften that callus and help it exfoliate naturally. And it ultimately will improve the exfoliation of the skin on the bottoms of the feet, helping to just kind of maintain everything smoother. It's a petrolatum ointment, has urea, and it has salicylic acid. Now, a word of warning about this, especially if you are a runner like myself, don't use it every single day um, because it, it is that good that eventually you need a little bit of callus there. Um, if, if you use this daily for a while, you'll notice that you start getting blisters if you run a lot. So be aware of that. You can use it daily for like a week or so if you've got a lot of callus and you want, want it to start looking better, but definitely back down on the frequency of use to just a couple of times a week as maintenance. It is expensive, but you really don't need very much. And once you get your feet to where you like them, you only need to use it a few times a week. And it's also helpful for the health of your nail plate as well. So that, that's one that I've been using for years, but again, be careful if you run or hike or do any kind of sport where you're on your feet a lot because you do need a little bit of something something there and if you use that too much you will be prone to blisters 
Anyways, you guys, those are my 10 most frequently repurchased products. This was a hard one to dial down to just 10 products because there are actually a lot of other products. For example, the Vanny, Vanny Cream Lip SPF, I repurchase a lot as well. Um, yeah, it was hard to come, come with just 10 for you guys, um, but these are definitely the ones that I repurchase the most. Anyways, let me know in the comments what skincare products you constantly go back to, regardless of what is new and trendy and coming out, that you always repurchase. Let me know. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.